don't try to get up to go anywhere just raise your hand they've got video cameras everywhere in there all right hi guys welcome back to another video i'm anna k all right so i'm here today outdoors again loving the outdoor vibes all right so i'm a registered nurse currently practicing in the uk previously a registered nurse well still a registered nurse in jamaica all right so i bring you all things nursing all things fitness yes all things um lifestyle a little bit of travel here and there all right so if you are interested in any of those please do like share and subscribe click the notification bell so that as soon as a video drop you'll be the first to know all right don't mind my attire coming from the gym today and I'm fully inspired so I said all right let me come and give you a video so today we're going to be talking about preparations for the CBT exam yes that computer-based test to register to start your process as a registered nurse in the UK so if you're interested to, if interested to hear a bit more about that stay tuned all right guys welcome back so thank you for staying tuned all right, so I did the CBT and I'm just going to go through the process of preparation basically for the CBT. So in preparation to come to the UK, besides registering with the NMC, you also have to do a CBT test, which is a computer-based test in your home country. All right, so as you go through your registration process with NMC, and I'll possibly do a video about the registration process, and um, you will come across after you have completed your initial registration you get verified from your home nursing council or your home your home nursing body then you once you're verified and they're okay with your qualifications and they're satisfied you will get an email from person from nmc to say that you are now um, you can now go ahead and book your competency test right so this test is done with person view and it's done in your home country which is good so your cbt cbt computer-based test is in two parts it was previously in one part but now it's in two parts and you'll be doing a clinical test and a numeracy the clinical exam is 100 questions and the numeracy is 15 questions right And 30 minutes for your numeracy, you will do that one first, okay? And then um, two and a half hours for your clinical um, exam. So you do that one after your CBT, after your numeracy. Okay, so when you get that email from Person View, so NMC is gonna okay you, Person View will follow with an email, all right? So the email will tell you that you have been, you're, they're okay for you to go ahead and book. So the, the uh, username will be created, an account will be created for you with a temporary password. You have to go into the person view, the instruction will be in the email. You go in and log in and then you change your password as soon as you click view exam on the person view website. All right, you're going to select the exam. So you've got adult nursing, mental health nursing, child nursing, this is pediatrics. You've got learning disability as well. Yes, they've got learning disability nursing in the UK. So it's also another speciality. So you can click to the exam get your correct exam all right um, then you're going to select both modules a and b so like i said a is the numeracy and b is the clinical so you click for both of them um, then you you're going to see sort of an individual price but don't pay the individual price any mind by the end of the um, registration process you will see it's 83 pounds for the actual cbt to book so you see the 83 pounds on the final payout and you pay okay i believe the cbt you you pay with i think um, for some countries i was told that some people are having difficulty with some direct debit cards so credit cards are the better options and um, to pay so if you can use somebody's credit card or you can attempt your card first and then see if it works all right so once you you're you're clicking to pay please pay attention to your exam code all right there are codes for your exam so like for example the adult nursing the code is rna right mental health nursing the code is rnmh registered nurse mental health and learning disability code is rnld for learning disability the child nursing code is rnc and um, midwifery is rm so just pay attention that you're registering under the right examination okay and you register for your exam once you do that when you click on those you will see sort of a date um, a calendar appear on the screen so with the calendar, you can choose whichever date that is feasible for you. All right, so just 
yeah, whatever that you want to do the exam. You can be prepared for this exam, to be honest. Two to three weeks is sufficient to prepare you if you're serious. You can be prepared. And there's lots of test banks. There's also practice tests on the Person View website. All right. And I will go through some of the questions um, later in the video as to like sort of an example of what you see for the um, on the website. So obviously you're going to prepare for the exam now. All right. So if I were you, I would go into the NMC website, of course. Read all you can all about the NMC. Know the NMC code. Okay, so know the code. You are required to know the um, a lot. Um, it's sufficient about the NMC code. NMC is quite particular about safe practice. So you need to know a little bit about safe practice, about management and accountability. You would need to know about safeguarding is a very, very, very big issue here. And safeguarding means that, um, like, basically it's social service in a sense, yeah? So like social services who can look after people's well, well-being well and the needs of um, whatever the, the situation is. So safeguard is if you have somebody on your area, like in a, on your ward and they're sort of at risk, either from home, school, wherever, it's your responsibility to report that. You can't just see something and kind of make it slide. So safeguarding is very important. So um, read up about safeguarding, read up about safe practice, about medication administration, what to do if there's a medication error, ensure that you know those things. And um, there's a thing over here, what they call the um, RL, which is basically your incident report, yeah? But they call it RL. So you fill out your incident reports, you report it to your, man your, your line manager, your um, Nick, your nurse in charge, your whoever your sister is on, right? So you make sure you report, you escalate what you need to escalate. Now, UK is very big on escalating. Anything that you think you can't manage, don't be, don't be scared to escalate. Escalate, 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 and document. So they will be asking you those things. I mean, everybody, you guys are already nurses in your country. So you know certain safe nurse practices already. So just do them something, focus on them things, right? Um, when you're preparing, read all you can. I'll show you there's a, like a 12 page document i'll probably input it now it's just 12 pages and it's preparing preparing you for the exam what to expect in the exam or the in um, how to prepare for it all right so things like arriving to the test center at least half an hour before the test is scheduled to start just to give yourself enough time to calm down go through the process register make sure you bring your passport and um, you might have a driver's license it's okay to use in your country as a national id for anything to do with nmc use your passport because that's a document that you're going to that's basically a document that you're going to be using straight through right up to the airport so do that so you read the code um, on the website on the nmc website to prepare yourself there's practice tests also on person view so if you go on to person view i'll put in i'll input some of the practice tests and you can see sort of the questions if you are pre um, preparing for mental health nursing just do the mental health nursing questions don't go and do everything for adults for learning this a bit for me just for it. also the numeracy questions have different sort of um areas so even though some of them the, the, some of the calculations are similar just stick to adult nursing if you're doing adult nursing calculations if you're doing midwifery stick to the midwifery calculations you don't need to do everything the calculations are quite basic um, there's 15 calculations they're very basic but you can fail very easily all right and i'm not gonna lie and um, tiptoe around that one so a lot of people do have do fail the numeracy because of just simple things like not reading the instructions properly okay before you actually start the, the exam numeracy is the first thing you're going to do there's a tutorial don't skip the tutorial you're not in a hurry the tutorial is not a part of the time that you're doing the exam so when you go through the tutorial that's not taken out of your exam time so it's very important that you read it understand how to go forward from one question to the next understand how to flag a question if you don't if you're not confident in answering that question at the moment and you want to go back to it the tutorial will tell you or show you how to flag the question how to go back to it you don't need a calculator let me just say that off the bat in the exam you actually don't need anything at all you don't even need a pen everything will give provide. you a little board with a marker to do your rough work as well they don't want you to carry anything at all inside the exam room so when you go i know that for myself i did it at mona university of west indies in jamaica you have a locker and you lock everything that you carry with you so your phone and everything is locked away nothing is taken into the room with you and um, you're, you're basically in a cubicle on your own. You can't see left or right. Just try 
just stay focused basically and do your exam if it's an issue at all you have to just raise your hand and wait for the invigilator or the person that's, that's examined to just come to you. Don't try to get up to go anywhere. Just raise your hand. They've got video cameras everywhere in there. So they will see you and they will address your concern. Okay, so you use your board as your rough work and you make your rough work on that. Um, and you've got a calculator that appears on the screen and you can use that calculator so you don't have to worry about mentally doing any calculations. Right, so there's there's some calculations on the person view the exam is just that the calculations that you see actually on the person view website the exams are exactly that so um, basic um, required of a stock times volume sort of exam uh, medication preparation calculating the dosage of medication um, drip factors drip drip rates and um, what you call it fluid balance chart so you're gonna do your fluid balance and then you with the fluid balance you have to remember to like I said, if you read everything, you'll be fine. So the mill, for example, there's no such thing as mills, MLS, and you will put MLS as mills at the end of your answer and you will get that wrong, even though your actual um, number is correct, like the digit that you have, the unit that you, well, the unit is incorrect. Once the unit is incorrect, the question is incorrect. So NMC is particular on, so it's lowercase m and, and, and uppercase l, and that's it, no s. Things like that will make you get it wrong. Do you understand? And then things like decimal places, you look up for decimal places because those are the reason why people are also getting it wrong. So if they ask you to round something, round it to the nearest whole number, round it up, and you know how to round up. All right, so don't use the dot, dot, point, whatever, whatever, whatever. Round it up to the nearest. If they ask you for the unit, make sure the unit is here. If a question, the unit is already at the end, don't go and put unit in the in the box because unit is already there. You just put the number, you will get it wrong. So it's small things like those where people are failing um, the numeracy. The clinical questions is a hundred questions, right? And you have to get, or well, the overall pass of the CBT is 68% actually. But for the numeracy, you need to get 14 out of 15 to pass it. And then for the clinical one, you need to get, so the 14 out of 50 is 90%. For the clinical one, is also like a 90%. So there's like 20 questions in there that are clinical based. Out of those 20 questions, you need to get 90% of that. So even if you get 68% overall, but in the clinical questions, you didn't get 90% correct out of those 20 questions, you're going to fail it. Yeah, it's as simple as that. So... The, the questions are not very difficult. Just think textbook. Don't think we are going to do a KPH or we are going to do a, I don't know, SAV or whichever hospital you're from. Yeah. So think textbook when you're answering these questions. Think best practice and think um, therapeutic and communication. So you do need to read also about communication and how you communicate with your patient and also with your colleagues. Okay. So those things. So management, delegation. Um, safe medication practice, the codes, what the codes stand for, um, abbreviations. When you're preparing, so the, the Royal Marsden book, I believe it, if memory serves me right, it is, is a very good book to read from cover to cover. It has everything that you need for the CBT. Um, and when you're preparing, there's something I was going to say just now, and it slipped my mind, and hopefully it will come back to me. Right, so it does come back to me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So when you are preparing for your exam, you will come across abbreviations like MUST, which is that Malnutrition University screening tool. You'll come across things like MUSE, which is the early National Early Warning Signs of like this when a patient is deteriorating. Pay attention to those abbreviations because they're really important to hear as practicing the UK. Make sure you understand what they're talking about. So your news is talking about your, your vital signs and things that you're going to check, your assessment for your patient. When you do your assessment, if you see any sort of deterioration, you know what to do. So you put out what they call a news call and you contact the doctors and people in charge to um, sort of reassess that and see what they want to do for that patient's care. All right, your must is your malnutrition screening. So every patient has to go through these risk assessments and these screenings, like weekly in the hospitals or some daily. All right, and so pay attention to these abbreviations because they will come again. And because it's not um, something that you're familiar with, it will probably just go over your head when you're reading it. Make sure it's thick. Yeah, it will help you a lot in the exam. Um, what else for the exam? So if you fail, all is not lost. If you fail, God forbid, no one will. Because like I said, if you practice sufficiently, go through the test banks. Now, if you're with a reputable agency, currently, right now in 2023, I'm with an agency 
and Radas. If you need any contact information for them, you can comment below and let me know. Um, I'm also working with the Radas um, agency at the moment. So they provide you with tools to help you with CBT. Okay, so CBT is provided and just plug in that in for them. Interview prep is also provided. But anyway, so your CBT tools is provided. So if you need, actually if you need um, some, I think I still have some in my email, you can comment below and I'll send it to you if you need some preparation, if you need some materials to prep you for CBT, okay? But like I said, you can go and person to your website as well and the NMC and just read up on things there. The Royal Marsden book, some people buy that book online on Amazon and um, if you can access it, by all means, I don't remember if I have it in my email, um, but comment below and then if you need it and let me know and I'll see what, what I've still got in the email. Um, but right, so just prepare yourself enough. It can, it's not, it's not a bad exam. It's not as stressful as, as NCLEX, to be honest. It's really not a bad exam. Like I said, one of the reasons why I chose the UK in my previous videos, you can click um, um, in that previous video somewhere. <laughs> All right, so I've got a previous video, but one of the reasons why I chose UK as opposed to US for nursing, you can go and um, watch that video and let me know your thoughts as well. Um, right, so you can actually pass this exam quite easily. So understand that safe practice is very important for them. Understand that therapeutic care is very important for them. Understand that communication is very important for nurses here and the NMC. And do the questions. There's like multiple choice test banks, a thousand and six or a thousand or something like that. If you can do all of them, just make yourself familiar with how they ask questions and the things that they're sort of asking. Yeah. So you do these test banks and you'll be fine. Right, so those are the things in preparation for your computer-based test. This is your um, uh, theory and maths, basically, numeracy test before you come to the UK as a registered nurse. Now, when you get here, there's OSCE. So we'll do, we'll talk about OSCE another time, but when you get here, there's another exam. Part two of that is basically your OSCE, which is a clinical structured um, exam. But the CBT you do in your home country before you get here. All right, so everybody that is waiting for their CBT, I know I have a few clients right now that is preparing, preparing for their CBT um, are the very best. And please comment below if you've done your CBT and if this video was useful to you and you've aced it, you've passed it, comment below. When you do your CBT as well, you get your results. But in Jamaica, I know that I've got the results same time. They're printed out for you there and then. So you know if you pass basically at the end of your exam. Um, alternative to that, you will see the upload in your CBT portal about two hours after. It will be uploaded on your portal, so you can go there as well to see whether you pass or not. So you don't have not only passed, press or wait forever in a day for your result either. So all the very best guys in your CBT exam, and um, we look forward to welcoming you in the UK as a nurse. All right, so if you have enjoyed this video, if you want to see more um, videos like this, like, comment, subscribe. Click that notification bell so whenever we do upload other videos you'll be the first to know all right so friends you forgot that preparing for cbt send the video to them share the link subscribe and tell a friend tell a friend tell a friend as usual Roma Arias say. so until then what good would i say jamaica what good and all the very best and just remember guys you need to pray as well right so in everything that you're preparing for your exam don't leave god out of it so whoever your god is yeah I serve obviously Jesus Christ, but well, not obviously, but yeah. Um, just um, pray, all right, and include God in everything that you do. And all the very best in your exam, all right, and let us know the success rates. Until then, guys, subscribe. Bye. Right, so these are some of the examples. So this is just asking you what mills is drawn up. And you read the instruction, it says to the one decimal place, right? And you put a decimal place simple as that where this meniscus fall like what's the what's what um mills is dispensed and you put the mill and then obviously you put the unit as well this question now is asking you you can see what is the mill what is the volume in mill so the mill is already there you realize everything there's no s and you just put it they're simple maths another example a patient has been prescribed 0.6 of ibuprofen what is the dose in mg right so gram to milligram and then make sure you look at micrograms to milli milligrams as well because it's quite big. So this is a required overstock type um, calculation, it's quite basic. These are basic calculations that you fully well know, but just pay attention to your 
your units your digits your decimal places and you'll be fine likewise this one what volume is drawn up right and you do your calculations and you write it the mill isn't there so you know you'll need to include that and then you go into like the iv so you're going to drip rate the effusion rates on the pump and it already has mill per hour so you know that you just put in the actual rate okay the longest part is this one the fluid balance just remember your um fluid balance your positive and negative um balances and you're good so that's it guys thank you so very much for watching like share and subscribe with your friends all the best with the cbt's